Jennifer Griffin is covering the Clinton campaign, and she joins us now. Jennifer, your thoughts about this? Well, Britt, it was very clear when she landed in Iowa that she had no idea that the FBI director had taken this uh, measure. In fact, they were flying at the time that the news broke, and the Wi-Fi was down on the airplane, and so the traveling press did not know, and Clinton's team did not know. So when she exited those steps and waved and smiled to the press, she did not know what was going on. She said now, after speaking twice here in Iowa and not addressing it during her prepared remarks, she said that she had time to then read the letter from Director Comey, she is calling on the FBI and the director to release the information that they have because she feels, uh, and this is in her words, that this was uh, uh, irresponsible and, it, and led to innuendo because of the letter, which, as she pointed out, was sent only to the Republican leaders of committees on Capitol Hill. So they are baffled by this. Uh, she would not confirm that what we have been reporting all day, um, based on uh, a source that I spoke to, that this, uh, the director's decision was made after his FBI agents came to him yesterday and said that as a result of the uh, investigation into Anthony Weiner and as a result of four electronic devices that were obtained as part of that investigation into him sexting with, uh, allegedly sexting with an underage girl, um, one of those electronic devices, I'm told by sources, uh, belonged to Huma Abedin, uh, but Hillary Clinton would not confirm right now that she had spoken to Huma about it, even though Huma is traveling with her and is on the plane with her. Um, and uh, she would not confirm the details that it was a result of the Wiener investigation. Britt. Wow, interesting, Jennifer. Boy, could, this hardly could get any stranger. Jennifer, thank you very much. <laughs> they are reopening the case into her criminal and illegal conduct that threatens the security of the United States of America. Donald Trump, earlier tonight, moments after the FBI announced that it is now reopening the investigation into Hillary Clinton's email server. Joining us now, the author of the best-selling book, Treason, former Speaker of the House, Fox News contributor, Newt Gingrich. Uh, Mr. Speaker, good to see you. I know you're in Woodstock, Georgia. You had a big crowd tonight like you have been having all around the country. Let me get your general thoughts on this. Also, do you believe WikiLeaks and the revelations about the server contributed to this, although it's not being reported? Well, let me start with, with what has happened that is extraordinary um, because it, it puts Director Comey in an impossible position. Uh, he supposedly this summer had completed an investigation, and I agree with Mayor Giuliani, done so badly that he's now reopening it 11 days before a presidential election. I mean, this is really amazingly bad for the Federal Bureau of Investigation, which has historically been a very methodical, very professional organization. So it raises a hundred different questions. But, but here's the key thing to remember. In 1972, Richard Nixon carried 49 states. He got 60.7% of the vote, the highest number, higher than Reagan in 84, highest number since World War II. And a year and a half later, he was out of office. The American people are about to have a candidate who is clearly going to be under criminal investigation for the entire first and second year of her presidency, if she could even survive it. Because what WikiLeaks has really done is it has as you put say this, the let whole me put foundation up the Wiki, in jeopardy. I don't want to interrupt you. As, you. as you talk about WikiLeaks, let me put up relevant. We'll put you on half the screen. We'll keep your beautiful face up. And on the I other know. half of the screen, I WikiLeaks revelation specific to the server. I'm sorry. I love, no, no, I love hanging out with you, because as you're explaining, you really don't want to interrupt me. You're interrupting me, and everybody who knows the two of us by now knows <laughs> that, you know, we've known each other a long time. <laughs> no, I'm okay. sorry. Here, I'm here's, sorry. Here, here, but here, here's the core point, and, and Andy McCarthy, who was, one of the, who was the prosecutor of the 1993 World Trade Center bombings, uh, and is one of the leading experts on terrorism in America, he, he has a column coming out in the morning where he points out this is a classic example of RICO. RICO is the statute for going after organized crime. And he walks you through in his column in the morning every single standard by which the FBI decides whether or not they're dealing with a conspiracy to commit organized crime, and by every single standard that you would apply to the mafia or the Mexican drug cartel or any other group, the Clinton family business is, in fact, a corporation engaged in organized crime. They, they, 
violated the law by misusing the office of Secretary of State. They have violated the law by trading on, on to get money in ways that were totally violative of being a nonprofit. I suspect the IRS will be forced to revoke their entire nonprofit status, which will mean all of their donors have to pay taxes on what they thought uh, the, was a, a tax-deductible contribution. Look, look at the U Russian uranium deal, for one. All the people that made money. Look at the Haitian deal. Look at the Moroccan deal. I mean, look at the AP pointing out that 55% of individuals that had access to then Secretary of State Hillary Clinton are all donors or all people that pledged. You pay money, you, you get... They had the separate list after the Haiti earthquake, Friends of Bill, uh, Clinton Foundation no. donors, you, you, so they could cash in on the contracts from the money that they raised to help the people so that they can then kick more money back to the Clinton Foundation. I mean, this is outrageous. Look, you go back and, well, you go back and look at how many people Rudy Giuliani put in jail when he was the U.S. attorney in New York City. And you ask Rudy if he could prepare this case with the full power of the federal government. How confident would he be that he would get multiple convictions? And I think he'll tell you that he would go to any jury in the country. He said I'd be in the jail. It would be virtually He's, impossible. Yeah, I, before you came on, he said I'd be in jail. I won't play it again, but look at what Trey... Let, let's go back to, to uh, FBI Director Comey. And he gives a 15-minute statement for 13 of the 15 minutes I'm sitting there like everybody else saying, Oh, my word, if you will, he's going to pull the trigger. And then he backs off at the last minute. Then he gets grilled by Trey Gowdy. Trey Gowdy gets him to admit that, in fact, she lied when she said she never sent or received classified information on a private email. Uh, he got her to say that uh, what she said was not true. Gowdy asked if there was nothing marked classified on her emails. Was that true when she said that? Comey's words, that's not true. And then a series of six other things. So how... Look. And anybody who destroyed government information by using BleachBit, which is an expensive, sophisticated design, in order to block anybody, even the FBI or the National Security Agency, from being able to figure out what was on the computer. That is, on the face of it, a crime in a situation where they have taken information from the U.S. government and they have now destroyed it. Now, just, just by itself... That's clearly a crime. And you cannot make any reasonable argument that Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton are not engaged in a series of crimes which for anybody else would blow up. And of course, what's now happened, and, and you asked me earlier what I think, you know, the truth is, uh, as you point out, I just have a, a new novel out. If I were a novelist and I tried to write that no the case was it. almost stopped, and then, <laughs> then Anthony Weiner's sex problems with a 15-year-old in North Carolina, gets the FBI to look at Anthony Weiner's material, and they discover, looking at his material, that his wife, Huma Abedin, has thousands and thousands of sure emails. I'm not sure I believe it. Which I suspect... Oh, I do. I think it was commingled on the home computer. I think that's, and I think that's, that's, that's a strong agent. possibility. And that's what's being reported. But I also yeah. think there's a WikiLeaks component here. And I, fe I think that James Comey realized this was going to be the single most embarrassing uh, scandal in the history, not only the FBI, but electoral politics. And he used that opportunity to reopen it to save face because he probably realizes what WikiLeaks has is devastating to his decision making, right or wrong. I think that's right. And I think all of us should join John Podesta in demanding that the FBI release everything by Monday. I mean, why shouldn't the American people see all of these emails? Everyone. Uh, Everyone, absolutely. I mean, Hil Hillary has assured us that none of them, are, are, none of them involve secrets. Right. So let's take her at her word. None of them involve secrets. They're all about They yoga. should release every single way, email by Monday. Yeah, that's all they're about. All right. Uh, yeah. I want to get to this other issue with Terry McAuliffe and money raised by Hillary in the PAC that went to Andrew McCabe's wife, who's running for Congress, and he's the guy that was running the investigation. There's also the fact that it can't be ignored in all of this. Three weeks after the Benghazi Select Committee sent, a Clinton, sent Clinton a subpoena in 2015 requesting that she turn over all emails related to the terror attack, an employee at the company that ran her server used bleach pit. You know, they acid washed uh, her server in an effort to permanently erase emails on the server. 
Joining us now, he's been following this from the get-go, is former New York City mayor, former prosecutor, Rudy Giuliani. All right, where do you want to begin? Because you just heard James Comey admit that the standard, the standard in this case, which is negligent or grossly negligent, not e you don't even have to be yeah, negligent. The definition of uh, negligent, grossly negligent, is extremely careless. Okay. So uh, Jim Comey didn't choose those words uh, idly. Those are the legal definition of what it means to be grossly negligent. So when he said that, he essentially said there was evidence to prove that you violated that statute. Also, the four or five times when he was answering Trey Gowdy's questions in which he pointed out that she lied to the FBI. Isn't that a crime? Every single one of them. That's what Martha Stewart went to jail for. For one of them. One and he admitted statement. five specific lies. Five specific lies, including one where and multiple instances a thousand work-related emails were found when she said that there were no work-related emails. If I did a this, thousand. would I be in jail? Uh, yeah, I'd be, visiting, I'd be visiting you now somewhere in Danamora. Or, would you bring me a cake or yeah, a I'd, I'd visit you, Sean. <laughs> I, you know, it's one of the great works that Jesus asked us to do during the Beatitudes. Yeah, know, that's visit, true. All right. Visit the people in prison. Let me ask you this, because they're saying today, and it broke after Comey made his remarks, they're saying, oh, this is related to Uma Abedin and emails. No, and you, know what, what this, you know what this is related to? What? It's related to the fact that they did a completely irresponsible investigation of this case. If you read the 302 of her interview, it's absurd. The FBI agent doing that 302 didn't follow up on anything. You mentioned the C. Mm -hmm. He didn't follow up on that. He didn't ask the questions. Was there an A or a B or, or a D, D or an E or an F to find out <laughs> if he's done it? Yeah. But she also said that she didn't remember her exit interview from the FBI because she had had a concussion and she had lost her memory. There are no questions following that, which you would expect from an agent conducting an investigation. She said she didn't be, remember being briefed yeah. about security, cyber security. Yes. But no questions like, well, how long had, did you lose your memory? Where's the documentation for it? Let's look at the medical records. In other words, she was questioned as follows. Did you commit the murder? No. Thank you. And they walked out. What about the, well, I don't necessarily know if it was technically immunity or a proffer arrangement, very limited in scope, but we know that there's a letter that was given. We don't even know if one was given to Uma Abedin. We know that in the process, evidence was destroyed in this case oh. by the FBI as part of a deal. A uh, uh, tremendous amount of evidence was destroyed by the FBI, by the people working for her. They used extraordinary methods that only criminals use to destroy uh, uh, emails, acid, bleach. They used hammers to destroy. Wait, 13. she only used one. One. She only used one. Thirteen. She did this for convenience. Are, but she had. I thought it was fourteen. Are you sure? I thought I, it was fourteen. Well, My recollection is fourteen. Well, I, I remember thirteen. Thir let's say fourteen. But they busted it with a hammer. But they they took Sean, acid to wash. How can clean? they all be missing? They're, They're all missing. They're all gone. What about it's hard this? to get rid of fourteen or thirteen cell phones. I have a friend of mine who's a special agent in the FBI. I had a long conversation with him. He said, every fellow agent is disgusted with the way James Comey has handled this. And here's what we also have discovered, that the guy, Andrew McCabe, who was promoted FBI deputy director, who supervised this particular investigation, that Governor Terry McAuliffe, one of the closest allies of the Yeah, country. also the guy who was selling the Lincoln bedroom. Right, that's uh, a guy. You know, a decade, yeah. a decade and a half ago. Through his PAC Common Good, which Hillary raised money for, contributed, this is, a, again, a total now of up to $675,000 to her long-shot congressional bid. <laughs> Most congressional bids don't spend 675 grand. That's just one donation. And how could he possibly well, investigate with a conflict of interest like that? Well, I get two stories out of the FBI, okay? okay. One story is this came from the Wiener sex tapes, and it's about Uma Abedin, and did she send classified information to Wiener? If she did, by the way, that would be a clear-out crime, 
Let's see if she gets prosecuted. Let me put up on the screen as you talk, by the way. You have identified on this program 16, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. Yeah, I did that about a year ago. Yeah, this is what we've been showing you. These are the very specific things that you said back in the day ought to be investigated. These are real felonies, real crime. People yeah. have really have gone to jail for all of these statutes. Yeah, well, I mean, the, the reality is that the report that Comey gave to us before he came to the conclusion that she shouldn't be prosecuted was a report that any prosecutor would have taken and taken before a grand jury probably got an indictment and the evidence of intent is overwhelming the best evidence of intent are two things false exculpatory statements well she made at least a dozen of those and you just showed them the second best evidence of intent is destruction of evidence well, they were destroying evidence all over well, the that's place. That's the intent to commit a crime. Well, that's Leaf how it is intent that's to how, commit a crime. That's how I proved intent in the hundreds of cases that I prosecuted. Uh, it, and it, the reality is that the first FBI investigation was a sham. You don't interview somebody on a Saturday and put out a complete report on a Tuesday unless the report was written before you interviewed her. Mr. Mayor, let me ask you very specific, as we keep those laws up there. You, uh, 18 U.S.C. 1924, unauthorized removal and retention of classified well, documents. She did it. Comey admits she did it. She did it. That's a crime. Absolutely. Okay, gathering, transmitting, or losing information, defense information. That's 18 U.S.C. 793. Did that too. Okay, by the way, imprisonment, 10 years and or $250,000 fine. Concealment, removal, mutilation <laughs> generally, 18 U.S.C. 2071. Yeah, mutilation, be, yeah, bleach, hammer. bleach, bleach, hammer, mutilation, acid. that's mutilation. Okay, right. destruction, alteration, falsification of records in federal investigations. Yeah, well, she did that too, and then I put a couple extra right, in, including my final question. interfering in an IRS investigation in which she called or went to Geneva to try to stop the IRS from getting the UBS secret uh, uh, identities of individuals. Let me put up on the, what the... Wiki Straight out violation of, of uh, another uh, 18 U.S. code and a quid pro quo for the three or four million talked. dollars they got from UBS. Let me put up on the screen again. The WikiLeaks re uh, revelation specific to the Clinton server. They knew. They knew from the beginning. Now, here's my theory. I think they used Uma Abedin and Anthony Weiner as an opportunity because the FBI, the Justice Department, the State Department, and the White House are scared to death because all of them colluded individually with the Clinton campaign and gave them all a heads up, and they all protected the president who was emailing on that very server and lied to the American people. True or false? Looks that way. Looks that way. I mean, it looks like you have a massive uh, conspiracy here. And this is almost now a uh, uh, truism, right? The cover-up is worse than, worse the, than crime. the crime. Is this worse than Watergate? Oh, i got to run. I'm although really although run. in this particular case, the crime was pretty bad. Exposing national security information right. to countries that we know can take it from us like that. Mr. Mayor, thanks for coming. For that, you shouldn't be allowed to get off. A lot more. Thanks for staying with us. I'm Eric Bowling in for Bill O'Reilly. And in the campaign 2016 segment tonight, how the Clinton campaign is responding to today's FBI bombshell and October surprise few saw coming. Joining us now from Washington, Fox News chief national correspondent Ed Henry and from Des Moines, Iowa, Fox News correspondent Jennifer Griffin, who's covering the Clinton campaign. Jennifer, I want to start with you because right after Hillary Clinton left that, were, that press conference where she said, uh, it's just factored in. The emails are factored in. She was apparently stepping off stage. Reporters heard her defiantly laugh when asked about this email scandal. Well, it's really interesting, Eric. At first, we weren't sure whether she was going to address the scandal at all. She had been at two campaign stops. She didn't address it in her prepared remarks. Then she held an impromptu uh, press conference, took about three questions from the traveling press. And as she was leaving, the NBC reporter shouted a question to her and said, do you think this will sink your election? And she threw her head back and she laughed defiantly. Uh, she did not answer the reporter. But earlier in the press conference, what she said is that the FBI had not contacted 
at her. She did not know what they were referring to. They don't know. She would not confirm whether it was, in fact, as we've been reporting all day, based on uh, a law enforcement source, that it was four devices that were uh, taken by the FBI as part of that investigation into Anthony Weiner's alleged sexting with an underage girl. One of those devices, I was told, uh, belonged to Huma Abedin. There are some reports that one of the devices was also a shared computer used by uh, Anthony Weiner and now his estranged wife, Huma. Huma was traveling with, uh, with Secretary Clinton today, but we did not see her in the rally behind me here at the gymnasium. Uh, again, she took just a few questions and she, she was defiant in her tone. She called on the uh, director of the FBI to release what he knows because mm -hmm. she felt with 11 days left, the voters need to know what he has. Yeah, and Ed, the political fallout is what? I mean, it, it feels big. I mean, I, I, all the networks are covering this wall to wall sure. because this is a big story. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to tell, but one clue I think uh, that they're nervous in the Clinton camp is everything Jennifer just reported. She actually took questions. She hates dealing with the press. She hates taking questions. Yes, she's done it a little bit more lately, but she's winning right now in most polls. It's not done, but she's winning. So she could have tried to run out the string for the next 11 days, but they know, as you say, Eric, this is a big deal. So they're trying to you know, sort of blunt the damage from James Comey by getting her out there and pushing back. But some of what she said in the news conference, we should pick apart. It rings hollow. She's, she challenged the FBI to put it all out there. We want the facts. We want more information. If Hillary Clinton wanted information out there, why is it taking so long for her to explain the server? Why was the server kept secret literally for years, Eric? That's hard to square. Yeah, and, and, and Jennifer, I cannot imagine. Now, you reported that she was on the airplane. Hillary Clinton was on the airplane, but the Internet was down. She didn't know this was bombshell was coming until she hit the tarmac and, and reporters said, hey, what's going on? Well, exactly, and the reporters traveling with her didn't know either because the Wi-Fi was down for all of them. And so when she came out of the plane and the pool reporter, Tamara Gitt, our embedded reporter, shouted a question saying, you know, what, had she been contacted by the FBI, she just smiled and waved. And at first it looked like she was just trying to ignore the press, but it really does seem like they were caught unawares. Um, she also uh, made a political point that she said that the, the letter was addressed just to the Republican heads of committees yeah. on Capitol Hill, the Intel Committee, and others, but we know that, of course, it went to both sides, also House and Senate. Jen, I got, Jen and Ed, I got to leave it right there and say thank you very much. Thank you. So there are legal questions and there are political questions. How will this new political fallout play into Mrs. Clinton's chances of winning the White House? Joining me now, Chris Steyerwalt, co-host of Perino and Steyerwalt. I'll tell you what, it's not on Sunday nights. They and will. Howie Kurtz, tell whatever. <laughs> House of, host of Media Buzz. <laughs> and there's news breaking right now, which is actually really interesting and good stuff. This is from Director Comey. Uh, this is a Fox News exclusive. It's an wow. internal memo obtained by Fox News. Uh, that just posted. It's a memo from him to his FBI staffers saying the election and timing of it required disclosure of the renewed probe, uh, saying he had to do it because of the political sensitivity that he was facing and the country was facing with this election. Man. This is a quote. Again, this is FoxNews.com reporting this exclusively. Quote, of course, we don't ordinarily tell Congress about ongoing investigations, but here I felt an obligation to do so given that I testified repeatedly in recent months that our investigation was completed, he wrote, Comey. I also think it would be misleading to the American people were we not to supplement the record. At the same time, however, given that we do not know the significance of this newly discovered collection of emails, I don't want to create a misleading impression. In trying to strike that balance in a brief letter and in the middle of an election season, there is significant risk of being misunderstood, but I wanted you to hear it directly from me. Man. Wow. Wow. Chris, Holy I mean, right? I was like, I can't quite get my arms around what the hell is happening. Like, this is... What the hell is happening? So we've never been here before. No. This is the first time that in the history of the Republic, because in the old days, a lot of weird stuff used to happen. Mm -hmm. But in the history of the Republic, since we had an FBI, we've never had this, that the federal police are involved in a presidential election to this degree. Mm -hmm. um, my job with you and with the viewers and with everybody else is to be an analyst of data. I tell you what the polls say, what's going to happen. Um, I got to tell you, I just as a citizen... I'm a little heartbroken tonight because I've watched now Democrats decry the FBI. And you hear in James Comey's email here, 
I'm trying to hold it together. I'm trying to keep it together. I'm under tremendous pressure from the Congress. I want to keep this together. And I'm in the same election cycle when, I heard, when I've heard Republicans cheer again and again for the Kremlin to be involved on the other side. Mm -hmm. And I say, at what point does politics stop at the water's edge? At what point does this begin to be about America and not about winning this election? And as I listen to these Democrats decry James Comey in doing this, and I hear a man saying in this email that you just wrote, hold together, please stay with me so that we can try to prosecute justice in an appropriate way. Mm -hmm. I am worried. This worries me. Howie, it, I'll tell you that, you know, my kids are little. They're seven, five, and three. And I wasn't going to work tonight. I was going to take a night off and be with them. But yeah. this broke, Good and I, I said, I got to go in. I'm trying to explain to them why I have to go in. In, in terms, a seven and a five year old can understand. My three year old was, you know, off breaking stuff. <laughs> and uh, my, my five year old <coughs> daughter and my seven year old son looked at me and, and said, So is, is Hillary Clinton going to go to jail? And then they said, what if she wins the presidency and then, and then she goes to jail? Then what? I mean, these are actual questions that people now need to ask. It is absolutely surreal. And when you throw in the weird Anthony Weiner sexting angle, it takes it to the level of, you know, a really bizarre Hollywood movie that would never get made because it would be so unrealistic. But look, this is indeed a bombshell. We don't know whether it's a nuclear bomb. We just in that memo from James Comey, we're looking into it. We don't know what we have. We don't know how relevant it is, but it really caps the worst week of Hillary Clinton's general election campaign coming after the WikiLeaks disclosure. And you got to say this, you know, no matter how it, if it turns out to be a nothing burger, mm -hmm. it is a gift from the political gods to Donald Trump, who will keep hammering this. And um, it, it really strikes at Hillary Clinton's Achilles heel because what's her Achilles heel? It's two thirds of the public doesn't think she's honest and trustworthy. Mm -hmm. It's true, and it does bear mentioning we don't know whether it's a bombshell yet. If it is all duplicates, that's a different yeah. story. Right. And that's why Democrats are mad, is because with 11 days to go, if this just is hanging fire for 11 days, and because they're obviously not going to come to a conclusion in 11 days. Mm -hmm. There's no way that an FBI investigation into Anthony Weiner. No, it's not going to get resolved, but does it change the election? Could it change this election? Well, right now it's doing one important thing, which is it's making Republicans feel better, like they could win, whether this transitions into next week and it, it convinces persuadable voters that mm -hmm. this is actually happening. Who knows? Howie, la we're here. Last, last question to you. Does it change the election? It possibly could, and for all of the prognosticators who came on the air a week ago and said, look at the polls, this is over, who's going to be Hillary Clinton's cabinet? I remember coaching then, stuff happens in a presidential campaign mm -hmm. in the last two weeks. We've never quite seen anything quite like this, then but no. who knows how this will affect the polls. It certainly makes it seem like a much more competitive race than it did this morning. Wow. Great to see you both. You bet. Thanks, Megan. Hi, I'm Eric Bowling in for Bill O'Reilly. Thanks for watching us. Bill will join us in just a moment and throughout the hour with tonight's breaking news story, stunning new developments in the Hillary Clinton email scandal as the FBI announced it's reviewing newly discovered emails that could have a direct bearing on that case. The FBI's action resulting from a separate investigation into disgraced former Congressman Anthony Weiner, the husband of top Clinton aide Uma Abedin. Weiner is under federal investigation for allegedly sexting an underage girl in North Carolina. As part of the inquiry, the Bureau seized devices from both Weiner and Huma Abedin, where it discovered numerous emails sent and received by Abedin, apparently relevant to the Clinton email investigation. The FBI is not releasing many details yet, and it is unclear if any of those emails were between Abedin and Mrs. Clinton or if any of them contained classified information. But Donald Trump and his supporters certainly praise that decision. As you might have heard earlier today, the FBI <laughs> after discovering new emails is reopening their investigation into Hillary Clinton. I have great respect for the FBI for righting this wrong. The American people fully understand her corruption, and we hope all, all justice will finally be served. And just a short time ago in Iowa, Hillary Clinton addressed the news for the first time. The director himself has said he doesn't know whether the emails referenced in his letter are significant or not. I'm confident, whatever they are, 
will not change the conclusion reached in July. Therefore, it's imperative that the Bureau explain this issue in question, whatever it is, without any delay. Now, you may remember that on July 5th, the FBI Director James Comey recommended no criminal charges be brought against Mrs. Clinton, despite saying she was, quote, extremely careless in her handling of classified information. Then, over the Labor Day holiday, he released documents that led Bill O'Reilly to question Comey's entire handling of the case. Take a look. I have revised my opinion on Director James Comey because he released some very important information about Hillary Clinton last Friday afternoon before Labor Day when few would see it. That was a political move. And even though I gave Mr. Comey the benefit of the doubt in the email investigation itself, I can no longer do so. He's lost all credibility. I mean, when he loses me, <laughs> yeah. and you lost me, yeah. Mr. Comey, I'm gone, all right? I don't believe you should be running that agency any longer. I don't believe that this is an honest investigation. I believe that this is political. I believe they never wanted to find out what happened. It's obvious the FBI booted the investigation, I believe intentionally now. The campaign itself, the Hillary Clinton machine itself, is admitting this is bad and they've yeah. got to do something. And Comey doesn't think it has anything to do with the investigation. It has. Everyone knows Hillary Clinton did not tell the truth about her email. But with the exception of one person. James Comey. Joining us now on the phone is Bill O'Reilly. So, Bill, we just heard your analysis of FBI Director James Comey. How did you know Comey booted the investigation? Well, it was quite apparent that um, you have a series of events, and they are, it is circumstantial evidence, but, but so much circumstantial evidence, that Comey uh, did not want to make this indictment. But the big smoking gun is that Comey did not call for a grand jury. I have spoken to dozens of FBI agents, both retired and in the service now. To a man, they say, that is extremely unusual in a complicated case like this. So now what you have is you have a political um, portion of this today, and then you have a legal portion. Let's take the politics first, Eric. If you look at the new Fox News poll, the enthusiasm deficit between Trump and Clinton is about 8%, 7%. That means that 7% of Trump supporters are more enthusiastic to vote than Hillary Clinton. Keep that in mind. Anything like this erodes enthusiasm for Hillary Clinton. All right, now our hardcore people are going to vote for her. But we're talking independents and we're talking Democrats who don't particularly like or trust her. So that enthusiasm level drops, and what happens then? Lower turnout. All right? So that's what happened today politically. So Trump seizes upon this, and his, if he doesn't blow it in the next 10 days, which he could, his message should be, she's corrupt. And if you elect her, there's a chance she may be indicted while she's the president. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because the situation is fluid. It's fluid. Comey made a huge mistake by not calling the grand jury because the grand jury of folks, regular Americans, would have then heard the evidence that Comey himself decided wasn't enough to indict because she didn't mean it. Now, let's get on to what was found today. Uma Abedin is one of Hillary's best friends. So you've got to know that they were emailing all the time, all the time. She had three servers and uh, no, she had one server and Wiener had three. You got to figure that uh, Aberdeen passed some of Hillary's stuff on to her husband, Wiener. All right, that's why Wiener is involved. So the FBI goes in to investigate Wiener on this 15 uh, year old girl thing, and they see stuff from Uma Aberdeen coming to Wiener about Hillary Clinton. You have to assume this. This is an assumption I'm making. And then they go back and they look at Aberdeen's uh, phone, and they see unbelievable amounts of uh, emails from Clinton to um, Uma. Now, if you're the FBI, and this is all benign, has nothing to do with national security or top secret, you don't do anything. If it's just, what are you doing tonight, what kind of dress you're going to wear, or uh, look at this, uh, Anthony, uh, Hillary Clinton has a good idea to do X, Y, and Z, that's not going to rise. 
So you know there's something in there. Yeah. Has to be. Yeah. Because because Comey would never put his butt on the line. Now here's the kicker. I talked to a very, very influential FBI guy the other day. He said there's only there's almost a mutiny within the FBI over James Comey's behavior in this investigation. He says that so many agents are angry that Comey knows he's lost all credibility within the agency. And that if he didn't put this out, that they were going to go public with it. And that Comey's career would have been done. He had to put it out. That's not saying that she's going to be charged. I'm not saying any of that. What What I am saying is that the FBI rank and file do not like the way James Comey conducted this investigation, do not feel it rose to the FBI standards, and this new stuff is enough to open, reopen the investigation, which is devastating for the Clinton campaign. Devastating, devastating. First on on a scale of 1 to 10, I'd like you to weigh in politically, forget legally for a second, but politically, scale of 1 to 10, you got to push it up towards the 8, 9, 10 area, especially with just 11 days left to, to go before the election. It's, it, it's hard to say because the, the candidates are so polarizing. Um, but I do, uh, as I said in the beginning, I think it's going to suppress turnout for Hillary Clinton. Um, the people are just going, you know, I've had enough. I don't want to vote for Trump, but I'm not going to go vote for her. And she needs a big turnout in states like Pennsylvania and New Hampshire. The other thing is that, um, politically speaking, Trump now can run with this for 10 days and raise the specter of absolute chaos if Hillary Clinton's elected and the FBI then finally does convene a grand jury because it's reopened now. They can do that now, and the pressure is going to build on them. And the final thing is the far left is going crazy. They're going nuts. Um, they're, they're accusing Comey of all kinds of things. Comey was their best friend up until three hours ago. Now he's the, the devil. Yeah. And um, so you're seeing this, this unbelievably visceral reaction. I must say that Hillary Clinton was smart today in what she did. That was a smart play. Hey, get it out there because she knows the FBI is not going to get it out there. This is a very interesting point you make that she did go to the, the podium. She said, first of all, she said that the emails, oh, they're factored in already. A lot of people on the right would disagree with that. But it's very interesting that both Hillary Clinton and Podesta today have said, get these emails out. We'll let the American yeah, public know. That's a, but, but so that's is Pence. That's a smart play. And, but because so they is know Pence. they're not going to get them out. But one of them's going to the lose way. in that. Right. One of them's going to be a loser in that. If, they're, if, if they bring it out now, someone's going to lose. Who loses? Well, they can't. They can't. If you're an FBI, if you're an investigative agency, you have to compare those emails to other things that she said, Hillary Clinton has said. You've got to do a whole bunch of things before you arrive at any conclusion. You can't just throw them out there. That's trial by media. But Hillary Clinton now, you know, what can they do? They're going to have to say, look, we didn't do anything and we want this all out hoping that they can go up to Election Day and people will buy that. And I'm not saying whether it's true or not. I'm not. I'm just saying that right now Trump has the advantage, if the Trump campaign then zeroes in on corruption, 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 corruption um, in the next 10 days. You know, very interesting you say that because we have Kellyanne Conway, senior advisor to the Trump campaign, coming up. Bill, I want to say thank you very much. We're going to... Joining us now in a Kelly file exclusive, Congressman Trey Gowdy, a member of the House Judiciary Committee, member of the House Oversight Committee, and the former chair of the Select Committee on Benghazi. Great to see you tonight, sir. Thank you for being with us. Your reaction now yes, ma'am. to this news about the FBI. Uh, Well, I think Director Comey did the right thing in supplementing his testimony. Remember, uh, Megan, Commissioner Koskinen is in trouble because he did not take the step of supplementing his congressional testimony. But beyond that, uh, his letter is pretty cryptic. Um, It's an unrelated investigation. He has not confirmed that it's the Anthony Weiner uh, sexting investigation, and he hasn't even confirmed yet uh, that that the information is significant. So... um, I appreciate the fact that he updated Congress, but but other than that, I'm going to let the Bureau do their job. How extraordinary is this? Well, it's pretty extraordinary because uh, Secretary Clinton had an extraordinary email arrangement with herself, and she is the the author of her own destiny. Mm -hmm. Uh, Everything that's happened since then is the natural, probable consequence Mm -hmm. of deciding you're going to have a rogue email system. So I understand she's upset, and I understand she doesn't like the timing, but she need to look no further than herself. The 
how is it possible, in your view, as a you know, former prosecutor, that Huma Abedin, who was under subpoena, would, would not have produced her home computer or directed the FBI to that device as relevant when they were seeking all of her documents? Well, you can even go back beyond that. Remember, the State Department allegedly went back to all of the top aides, the seventh floor principals at the State Department, to try to recreate uh, the record. They missed it as well. I, I, I'm reluctant to speculate because I, I, I don't like to do that as a former prosecutor, but it may have been emails that were deleted. Remember, Secretary Clinton said she turned over all work-related emails. We now know that thousands were deleted. And for all I know, this tranche may have been among those that were deleted, and therefore the Bureau did not have access to them originally. Because you cannot get any closer to Hillary Clinton than Huma Abedin. I mean, you can't, like, that's her, it's her right-hand person, it's her closest aide, they're, they're like family. I mean, this would be the, one of the first places you would look uh, to, when, you, when you were turned on to the fact that there was a secret server to, to find the relevant documents. And I, it just, it's, it's inconceivable to me that the FBI did not ask her for it. And if she, if she knowingly withheld the disclosure of this device or failed to search it, there are all sorts of issues there. What? What's going to happen next? Because you and I both know this thing doesn't get resolved in 11 days. Does Comey need to come out and say more about it, as Hillary is demanding? And if he doesn't, what happens over the next 11 days? Well, she's welcome to tell us what would be on that computer. I mean, Director Comey's not the only person uh, who would know what, what's on Anthony Weiner's computer. I mean, Secretary Clinton's welcome to hold a press conference tomorrow and say, you know, it may be this, because Uma and I discussed this. So he cannot confirm or deny the existence of an investigation. That's DOJ rules. And, and Secretary Clinton knows he cannot produce the information in the middle of an investigation mm -hmm. So, so it's a little bit, to me, Megan, I mean, it's just the same person who said I neither sent nor received classified information. Mm -hmm. It's the same person who said I turned over all my work-related emails. I only had one device. My lawyers went through everything. I, that's the same person calling that, that, that now wants all of this public disclosure. The same person who went to great lengths to make sure that these emails were private, now all of a sudden wants it all made public. It's... It's just too rich. She denied it. I mean, she dodged it tonight when she was asked, have you spoken with Uma? And, I mean, you know how it is. I have a right-hand woman here, too. And if my right-hand person, my assistant, found herself in this position and I, because of my decisions, I'd say, hey, Abby, what the hell was on your computer? And then I come out and explain because there's only 11 days to the election. I and mean, this is a dodge. Hillary, you raise a good point. Hillary and Huma are in charge of that information. And they do know, at least her right-hand person knows what was on her home computer. And she does, they can't just point to Comey saying, you need to disclose more. I'll give you the final word, sir. Well, I mean, it's easy to ask people you know cannot disclose things to do so. I mean, that makes her look transparent. But if it's a day that ends in Y, you can rest assured she's talked to Uma Abedin and Cheryl Mills. She knows exactly what is on those computers, just like her lawyers know what was deleted from the Platt River network. And if she's dying for us to know what she and Uma Abedin were doing on Anthony Weiner's computer, she's welcome to tell us. Just tell us. Congressman Trey Gowdy, great to see you. Yes, ma'am. You too. In the impact segment tonight, the Trump campaign's reaction to today's news that the FBI is looking at newly found emails that might impact the Hillary Clinton email case. A Donald Trump rally is set to begin momentarily in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. We'll go straight to it when Trump takes the stage. But in the meantime, joining us now from Trump campaign headquarters in New York City, his campaign manager, Kellyanne Conway. Kellyanne. Hillary Clinton, less than now, about an hour ago, said this is factored in, this email, this new uh, reinvestigating uh, Hillary Clinton. Is it factored in for the voters? No, it's not factored in. That's kind of weak spin on her part. And the reason it's not factored in is it's a separate investigation. And it also presumes that people in her orbit did not turn over every device they were asked to turn over. So maybe there are one or two still out there. It's reported today that it would be, it'd be a device with whom Aberdeen once she shared with her husband, Anthony Weiner, who's under investigation for sexting, as you know. And, and it also, you know, the idea that somebody who is seen by two-thirds of America as not honest and not trustworthy would say, oh, voters have already factored this in, I'm good, really shows how out of touch she is with her major problems. 
in winning this race. If you have people who already question your veracity, questioning your fitness to lead, if you're under your second FBI investigation in the same year, then you do have a problem, uh, a, cor a corruption and ethics problem. And that's really been dogging her all along. We know that. When you look at who the undecided voters are in the Fox News poll from last week, Eric, they would be Trump voters. They're 13% independent, 10% white men and white women without a college degree, 9% rural voters, and 7% of undecided overall. They will come home to Donald Trump when they hear things like this because they'll say, you know what, I'm already reluctant and hesitant to vote for Hillary Clinton, and this confirms my worst suspicions. Plus, Donald Trump's out there talking about defeating ISIS, creating jobs, renegotiating so, so really bad that, trade deals, and then and repealing and replacing Obamacare. This is what I want to ask you. This, so you have some, you've had a couple of major gifts thrown into your lap this week. You have the, the White House acknowledging the fact that Obamacare premiums are skyrocketing, and then you have yes. this. How does Donald Trump stay focused on message and not chase a rabbit down the rabbit hole. Well, he is. He's about to give his third of three speeches today where he talks about repealing and replacing Obamacare. He talks about specifically about the hike in premiums, some, somewhere like in Arizona, maybe even more than 100 percent increase hike. Uh, other states like Pennsylvania, New Hampshire, North Carolina, they're coming out with what their hikes will be. And Obamacare is still the best example we have of how intrusive, invasive, expensive, and expansive the federal government becomes in our lives. And he's out there talking about that. He's out there talking about uh, creating 25 million jobs over 10 years, unleashing energy independence, reducing taxes across the board, including for middle class families, elder care, child care tax credits. Mm -hmm. I mean, this guy has many different policy plans if people actually want to go and read them. And you've got Hillary Clinton playing defense with 11 days to go. A woman who reportedly did focus groups and polling two years before the election is not going to be able to figure out a plan B here, I and, promise you. And your you. pollster, too, by, by trade, has, is this enough to change the momentum to, to, to tighten the polls or even flip them? Well, the momentum has been changing. Our internal, our internal polls this week showed great improvement, particularly among self-identified Republicans, soft Republicans, independents, and a couple of other groups who were... Um, who were in the more undecided category, say two, two and a half weeks ago. The other thing you're seeing is in national polls like the ABC News Washington Post poll, Donald Trump was minus 12 on Sunday. Today he's minus four. I think that poll will continue to go in his direction. We like the momentum, the trend lines, and we like the fact, Eric, that despite okay. everybody saying the race is over, she won, yeah. Yeah. he still gets these historically large crowds and he still is able to take his message to the voters. He, he wrote a $10 million check to himself today. The polls are tightening and right. Hillary Clinton's on defense. It's a good day. Kelly, and I got to leave it right there. Thank you very much.